हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द इंटरव्यू सीरीज विथ वरुण एक्चुअली वरुण इज वन ऑफ माई फ्रेंड्स हु वी स्टार्टेड डूइंग मास्टर्स टूगेदर इन ट्यू डेल्फ एंड आफ्टर डूइंग मास्टर्स आई जॉइन पी एच डी एंड ही हैज बीन वर्किंग इन ए कंसल्टेंसी फॉर्म सो द मेन पर्पज ऑफ दिस मीटिंग इज दैट वी वॉन्ट टू शेयर varun's experience of uh searching for a job while you are doing masters and how you go about this process and what happens during the job and how is the work culture and all kind of stuff revolving around this uh idea so this is the main theme of the interview today and we'll try to keep it as short as possible but you know it's so many points so you never know so yeah now i would like to have varun speak about some of his yeah so uh, what is the first question you have yes yeah, so, so the very first thing that i always find with the while doing masters even i experience that uh, like you have some short term Uh, jobs or maybe internships which people do during their masters yeah so what is your experience like how do people search this uh, internship positions and uh, how much duration do they have and what are the other details about the finding the internships and doing one and something like that maybe you yeah. can elaborate yeah yeah so i think there are different ways in which people end up finding internships typically that is at the end of the uh, first year so in a masters course that is around 2 years or more at the end of the first year the students generally uh, try to find their internships so during the summer period and after that and the search for those internships might begin somewhat uh, you know few months before itself so you could say if you're planning to do an internship from june to august you might need to start searching for them in the months of january or february and you have different options for that one is that you typically have some career fairs during that time wherein companies come to the campus and they just present some information about their own company about the kind of career opportunities that you may have and then you have a very interactive sort of platform where you go and meet uh some employees working in those companies and then build your network through that and you might even ask them you know if there are possible opportunities to do internships in some cases they might just direct you to apply through their portals and in other cases they might just invite you over for a call or an interview in their offices so that is one way another way is just uh through your own personal contacts which could be through uh your professors uh some other people whom you might have uh, met or known uh, you know during your time at the university and then there's also the career center which uh, through which they have some in some cases some internship positions available that you can directly apply for so i yeah i would say there are a mix of you know options that you have to apply for internship positions Mm-hmm. uh also i think the yes delft also yeah. is like yeah yeah i mean if you are in tu delft like maybe i'll leave the links below so yeah i think for i, I mean i don't know much about yes delft but i know that they are uh, like in basically yeah startup incubator and they have several companies there uh, as part of that whole setup mm-hmm. and i've heard from other students that uh, people have do end up finding a lot of these internship or traineeship positions Mm-hmm. within that uh, within yestel within the companies there mm-hmm. so yeah that's also uh, another possibility yeah okay okay yeah so uh, let's move on to the next question that we have uh, yeah. prepared for you guys <laughs> uh, so how do you i mean internship is just part of your course curriculum but after that once you are finishing your masters most people are really really i mean 
because they've spent a lot amount of money international students so how they repay the money like how do they start finding the jobs uh, before they finish the masters how does that process goes on like the search process and the portals or maybe how you approach someone or find the different yeah. opportunities i think i think in this regard the internship itself is a very good way to to do to actually Network. get some experience in the dutch labor market and also mm. make it easier for you to find a job after the after your internship finishes and one thing i want to mention is that an internship can both be a 3 2 to 3 month process but it can also be extended to a a project or a internship that includes your thesis project as well so you can also do your graduation project within mm. a company so that can take between 8 to 9 months mm -hmm. so so in, in total you can have a 12 month period within a company uh, that you can sort of spend working there and at the end of that 12 month period you get a real good idea of how the company functions whether you like or like the environment or not what are the possible opportunities there and the employee employer also gets to know you and can evaluate you much better so that's one way to actually find a job at the end and the other options are again these kinds of career fairs and then also applying to job portals directly uh, so if you have a good idea of the kind of companies that you want to apply to then you just uh, do it through their portals or yeah contact recruiters directly another important tool is linkedin that mm -hmm. i want to mention uh, linkedin is a really good tool to actually network with people and uh, yeah meet also contact recruiters directly so i think i would advise you to really keep your linkedin profile up to date be be really uh, active in that platform not just by you know uh, following people but also sort of expressing your opinion on things commenting on people's posts making your profile really visible yeah so that really helps and a lot of the job positions are also made available on linkedin mm -hmm. so once you have <coughs> set up your profile you get job recommendations as well so linkedin is a really good tool yeah i mean personally i also felt a lot of times that uh, i mean i didn't have that good linkedin profile but once you come to know of here everyone is building their linkedin profile that really yeah. helps a yeah. lot to yeah. uh, network and uh, find potential positions yeah. and yeah i've also heard that a lot of uh, recruiters in in the dutch market they use linkedin mm -hmm. linkedin really yeah. heavily so yeah that's that's a really important tool and also one more thing like i'll leave baron's linkedin profile yeah. below so that you can maybe contact him for future if you want to apply or just to get some insight of what is happening yeah. depending on how busy he is i'm not like, yeah I'm, I'm open to you you're free feel uh, free to contact and me. maybe you can also mention which field he was your area yeah so i studied uh, 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 i did a masters degree in electrical engineering with a specialization in telecommunications mm -hmm. so i now now work as a telecom consultant in a firm here in the hague so yeah that's that's my background but i can obviously uh, if you're from the same background i can help you much better but in general i can also direct you to people who i know mm. personally who are in the same background background as you are mm, that's so nice thank so you that's also perfect yeah. yeah thank you so the next question is mm -hmm. that uh, suppose in the worst case uh, a person or a student doesn't find a job after immediately finishing his masters mm, then yeah what are the options available for him like for how can how long can he stay in netherlands and uh, can how can he repay that amount of money and uh, how does he search for jobs or how does he bring that motivation or that kind of things like what happens yeah uh, so even in my case i didn't have a job already uh, at the time of my graduation so i mean i was also personally quite busy with my internship and thesis mm -hmm. although i did it in the same in a company i chose not to continue in that same company and also there were cases where they didn't have enough positions available that suited my interest so yeah in the end i didn't have a job at the time of my graduation so uh, so the option i went for is the so called uh, orientation year uh, scheme so it's a type of visa that's uh, 
that's yes, that's, that's visa, yeah it's called Zoekiar. Zoekiar in Dutch. So that's a visa scheme that the Dutch government introduced some years back, and that is the whole idea behind that scheme is that uh, students graduating with a master's or bachelor's degree or even a research degree like you, so if you graduate from PhD mm. program, you can take up that visa. And that allows you to stay in the Netherlands for one year, mm -hmm. and during that one year, you have uh, you're you're allowed to work in the Dutch ma labor market without any special permits required uh, to be applied by the employer. So you're basically free to work in the labor market. You're free to take up any kinds of jobs or work uh, traineeships and any kind of work experience. So that's a very interesting scheme that is uh, that was introduced, and that's the scheme I also uh, chose after I graduated. So I applied for that orientation year visa. Uh, the only rule is that you have to take up that uh, scheme. I mean, within the three years after mm -hmm. you graduate. So you, so once three years have passed, you can't, can't take uh, advantage of that. So it's meant for recent graduates, and yeah, and also. There's also possibility where you have got a job before you grad before you graduated, but you left that or you had to leave that job after one year. So you can again go back to that scheme, ah, okay. take up that visa, stay for a year to look for a new job mm. if you need it. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's one way, uh, of course. And yeah, and otherwise after you graduate, I think you only have about two months max that you can actually stay. And after which your permit expires and you'll have to leave. Mm, okay. But yeah. I mean, as far as my experience is concerned, I think most of the people, even if they don't get a job immediately after graduating, they yeah. generally end up with a job in yeah. maybe three or four months at max. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. get more than that. I mean, yeah. the job scenario around Netherlands, considering the thriving startups, is really good, right? Like. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on field to field. Uh, okay. I can't comment comment on every mm -hmm. field, but specifically in uh, software, IT uh, industries, it's really booming okay. for sure. But in other cases, I can't mm -hmm. be really sure. But I think, again, it depends on the kind of efforts that you put mm. uh, during the two years of master's. I mean, how much you developed yourself, um, what kind of contacts you've uh, built, and then how prepared you are, in a sense, for that for the labor market or for the kinds of jobs that are in demand here. So I think the best thing is to kind of research during your study period to understand what are the demands here. I mean, again, that depends on whether you want to work here or somewhere else. But if you want to work here, then I think you should understand what kinds of, uh, you know, job, mm -hmm. and what is the kind of work culture here and things like that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how do you apply for this orientation, like the search year yeah, visa? Yeah, uh, so the orientation year visa application is actually quite simple and it's it's uh, completely can be done online and uh, we leave the links uh, down below mm -hmm. for more details. But the key thing to remember is that you need to have a proof of your graduation, so proof that you've completed your study. So one way is to just uh, attach your copy of your degree mm -hmm. but it's also possible if you don't have your degree uh, as soon as you graduate you can also get a statement of completion from the academic council or whoever is responsible for you know uh, signing off on your graduation for example mm -hmm. so you can just provide a statement of completion and then attach it with your application with all the regular stuff like your copy of your old residence permit or maybe a copy of a passport and things like that so I think, yeah, the process is pretty simple. Yeah, there is a fee involved now. Uh, I mean, uh, I think a year ago it was about uh, 300 to 400 euros, but now it's, uh, what well, it has been reduced to 300 euros now. Oh, nice. So they want people yeah. to stay. Earlier and... it was quite expensive, That's more great. than that. Yeah. So, and then they have a decision period of about 90 days at max. But for me, it I think took about two months for the actual residence card to come in, but you don't really have to wait for that because the moment you apply, you can get an endorsement sticker that mm. allows you or gives you the same benefits, so you can immediately start working once you once you apply for it. 
Mm, okay. You don't necessarily have to have that card yeah. to start working. Okay, you so just need that endorsement sticker. Yeah, that seems the 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 process is quite simple and yeah. worker friendly, like yeah, student yeah. friendly. So. Correct. Okay. But okay. there are a lot of other, I think, uh, detailed questions that you may have. So I think what happens after the end of the orientation year mm. visa? So then, of course, your employer has to then apply for a new type of visa which is the typical highly skilled migrant visa uh, that is not might be applicable for most of uh, us who, who do our masters here mm -hmm. so then yeah after the completion of that one year then you have to switch to the different type of visa which your employer is responsible for so if your contract gets extended then you have to switch to the different the new type of visa mm, okay yeah I think yeah. that's pretty much yeah. everything yeah. covering the. So uh, maybe moving on to the next question, uh, as you have already been working for some years in the consultancy firm, maybe you can describe the details. Uh, like, how do you find the work culture here? Like, what yeah. personal feeling or opinion you have about the work culture in Netherlands? Yeah. So I think I. Uh, I did an internship for that was about a an year and then I've been working in this consultancy firm for about eight to nine eight months or so and I think to me the main key aspect of aspects of the work culture are that you know they have a very flat organizational structure mm -hmm. so I think for us we coming from India mm -hmm. that's a key difference because mm -hmm. there in India we have a lot of hierarchy but yeah. here there's no clear you know hierarchical structure in the organization so you're kind of uh, it's you yeah it's a very open minded uh, reach yeah any you, anyone is accessible yeah. yeah so your manager anyone he's he's accessible to you and uh, they value your opinion as well even if you're a junior or whatever your position may be if you're you're in a discussion your opinion is valued and coming yeah talking about discussion i think a dutch working culture is also centers around uh, discussions and consensus because they often uh, encourage you to have discussions with people to you know to to, to make a decision for mm -hmm. example so they encourage that as well and so sometimes the, i mean sorry to interrupt so they value each person's opinion like yeah maybe yeah, yeah. someone very uh, in the no tire or yeah. maybe an experience or something yeah. like that. but still you're you may have knowledge about something as mm -hmm. long as you're making an educated yeah. opinion then it's valued and yeah that's that's also it and yeah some people also talk about directness in Dutch culture yeah that it, it all that is also evident in many ways that uh, they, they they don't so when you're when someone is expre expressing his opinion they're quite clear about it and they expect your communication to be clear as well about something so if you have any concerns about something you're not liking the work you your current work for example or you have some problems with colleagues or things like that they expect you to be open about it and be direct about it so yeah these aspects are also there mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah i mean i can see some of the similarities because uh, in phd as i mentioned in before you can check my week two or week one video that uh, PhD also is like a job, what you do here, you are an employee in Netherlands. Yeah. So there also I find like uh, the flat hierarchy, I mean the flat structure thing is also similar yeah. because in our thing like in India you need to address a professor with so much adjectives mm -hmm. or maybe so much uh, respect. Uh, I mean I am not uh, in contradiction with that but it's quite, uh, feels very friendly and very easy to just call them by their name and maybe meet them by the coffee machine and uh, discuss something because you always don't have time for the meetings. Mm -hmm. So it's quite, I mean, that helps a lot, this kind of structure where you don't have any barriers and nothing between your superiors and your juniors. And uh, I think other things are pretty much similar, like what he said about directness and others. And in my case, as I'm not in a big university, it's like a research center. So we don't see much of the students. So that's why I mean, like, we don't experience that much of a typical what you experience in a PhD scenario in a big university. But still, it's I mean, 
the 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 things as i mentioned before are almost the same like uh, um, i don't have anything something new to yeah, share yeah i mean like, you can always go up to your uh, promoters for yeah, example yeah. and talk about things yeah, yeah 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 so it's basically the same yeah That's so i know that it's getting a bit long but this is how it is you need to cover different points so that it gives you a overall view of what is happens while finding work and all those sort of stuff so moving on to our last but not the least question uh so what uh which many people ask because people are always after numbers that is very strange but people are always after numbers so what type of salary ranges you find mm-hmm. uh in the job domain and mm-hmm. maybe i will add something for the phd mm-hmm. and uh, what is the contract procedure here mm. how who applies the contract what's yeah. the duration and how is it renewed and this yeah, sort yeah. of stuff so yeah. maybe you can add some yeah. insight to it so i mean regarding the salary uh, so i would just provide a broad bracket mm. so i would say like typically if you're graduating and assuming you don't have a lot of work experience then i would say between a gross salary of uh, 2.5k to 3.5k could be a bracket gross. yeah a gross salary mm. and then again it depends on a lot of you know what you get as a net income depends on the taxes and bonus thing, and yeah, bonus and, of course and uh, yeah and another thing to just specify here is that your salary bracket is also determined based on the visa type for mm-hmm. example orientation year visa if you look at the details of that scheme it also provides a certain bracket which is comparatively lower than the bracket that applies for the highly skilled migrant visa if you're coming if you're being recruited directly from abroad so that's a kind of incentive for the employer so that that's something you should keep in mind uh, when discussing having salary negotiations for example just to have just so that the employer is not going too low or mm. yeah things like that so that's one thing and um, about the contract uh, typically what you see here is that Uh, companies first give you a one or two year contract a kind of a, how how do you say a trial uh, like the the probation, probation kind years. of period so they evaluate so, your performance yes and... yes so they give you a yeah they do that evaluation of performance and then at the end of that two year some companies also again extend it to one or two years but i think in most cases they just ex- convert it into a permanent or indefinite kind of contract mm-hmm. so So again uh the visa duration so if it's an orientation year visa that you're on then the companies would just limit the contract till the duration of your orientation year visa mm-hmm. and then after that they might give another one year contract with the HSM visa or they might just extend it to an indefinite contract and if it's so your residence permit is valid as long as the contract duration is valid for and if it's an indefinite contract then your residence permit is valid for 5 years okay that's a key thing to remember and uh, yeah 5 years uh, you would have to again renew that and the contract. employer applies it on yeah everything is applied by the employer on your on your behalf okay yeah. and uh, i think last thing i just want to add like regarding the salary in a phd Uh, normally the gross salary varies between 2.2k to 2.8k throughout the four years and mostly in first year you get around 2.2k gross and it increases a lot in the second year and then it continues progressive increase like 2.5 2.6 2.8 something like that for second mm. year to fourth year onwards so it's a little bit less than what you get in a job but then you get the degree and it's something different so i don't want to compare the phd and the job there are different perks and downsides of each so uh you can also check the week 1 video if you have not checked about the salary of phd and so thank you very much varun for uh, taking out so much of your time on a sunday in delft and just half an hour that's it not yeah, a problem <laughs> you will burn sunday yeah but it's really nice that we all can come together and maybe help you guys out there to who are coming to netherlands or who are in netherlands and going to search for jobs or something and if it helps you then please share this video among everyone and uh, help each other and uh, enjoy the content and share among everyone and 
don't forget yeah. to subscribe and <laughs> yeah thanks sambit for having me here and yeah just uh, do share this video and subscribe for more such interesting content uh, yeah. i think he has a lot of interesting content in store for you okay. uh, in the up upcoming week so yeah. yeah thank you thank you so sambit uh, we are nearing the end of 2018 yeah, right cool. time flies so fast yeah so happy, happy new, new year, year everyone, everyone. So see, see you in, in the, the coming, coming weeks. weeks. Peace. Peace. Oh, why did I put my hand? <laughs> I think it's fine. Just wait. So the I mean I'll cut this. <laughs> Your first question is fine. I mean I don't remember. So okay. I'll read that. So yeah, this yeah. part is cut. And these things we just and uh, so thank you very much, uh, Varun. For yeah. you're welcome. Just I always laugh with the thank you. I don't know why, but <laughs> no. 2018 oh yes right so so happy new happy year happy new year everyone no <laughs> <laughs> do it again <laughs>